Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at Justin's Fish Room and today we're actually in the fish room which is so exciting because we're slowly getting more and more acquainted with all the fish tanks that we have here um, which by the way is only a small fraction of what's going to be in here which is just behind me. So um, today I'm going to be doing a video uh, based off a lot of requests that I've been getting on some of my RAM, um, RAM videos and that is how to decipher between a poor quality RAM and a really good quality RAM when you're deciding to buy a RAM in the pet shop. You might be looking at these RAMs and you might just grab a bunch. And so many people every week come to me and they tell me about how their RAMs get sunken in stomachs, they get cancer growths, and they die. And this is for several reasons, but we won't go into those right now. I actually want to go ahead and show you the difference between a really good looking RAM and really bad ones. And I've been working so hard in my brood stock to secure really good quality rams, looking at things like a really good uh, lump on the head for the dominant males. That's actually something that people don't really see a lot of, but it's an actual part of the physiology of a male ram. So that's also very fascinating to know about. Um, you know, even the coloring on the females, the difference, is, difference between the males and the females. You know, there are very distinct differences as they are sexually dimorphic. And um, if you've got two rams that look very similar, chances are they've been hormone treated. So without further ado, let's get straight into this and let's go have a look at some good quality rams. So before we get going on quality, I actually have uh, spotted these guys spawning in the corner of my eye. And... Um, just, you know, couldn't resist but show you guys the process of spawning because it's just one of those things that really fascinates me. Uh, this is a blue-black pair and it's actually my more recent pairs, uh, which is pretty cool. That's actually quite a young male that I just put in there last week and this is a female that didn't pair off for quite a while. So, yeah, this is um, a good example of good quality blue-black pairs, even though he's just a really young male. He's still only about three to four months, so close, closer to four months. Um, and you can already see how beautiful his colors are and his dorsal flick there. So thought it would be a good opportunity to show you guys um, some spawning. And I know this happens nearly every time I film and it must just be a Saturday thing. I don't know, don't know why, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so that was pretty cool seeing the blue-black pair spawn and i um, really happy with them as they are first-time spawners, so they're a good pair, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to take you over to my community fish tank to have a look at some of the uh, individuals that show really good quality traits. And a bit of a disclosure, there are some individuals in here that even if they're bred, I would not take their babies. Uh, or their spawn to hatch because there are certain traits that you may think are quite picky but for a breeder and for someone who's serious about the strain and making sure that there's good lines I have to be very pedantic about what uh, what individuals I choose for breeding so I'll show you some of those as well so let's get this going alrighty so this is my OG male he is the father to all of the babies that you guys know, except for some of these blue blacks. Um, and he is just top notch, best quality ram, uh, male ram that I've ever seen. That yellow is exquisite, his blue is on point, his black markings are great. His dorsal fleck uh, used to be a lot more impressive than it is now because he is a very old ram, he's a couple years old. So he and his female do breed, but the female actually doesn't produce any eggs anymore. So they've retired and you can see her there. So she's actually, um, she's actually become a little bit disabled, uh, in her, uh, borrowed time as a ram because, uh, she's stopped producing eggs. So her ovaries have decreased in size and she kind of, let's see if I can get a good image of her. She kind of sits on the bottom. She's still happy and they still protect their spawning sites. They still stick together. They're a very good couple. Um, but yeah, so the point that I'm trying to make is this male, by selecting such a good line of male and a female, I have managed to get some really good looking offspring. 
So here's a female that you can see saying hi to the camera right here. This is a very young female and she's actually got some eggs. So that's uh, my OG male's daughter and she's looking really, really cool. She's got a nice dorsal fleck, good spangling and um, she's only like three months old. So that's, that's really, really good. Now I'm going to show you one of, um, one of his sons and I'll show you how good he looks. Okay, so this was quite a tricky shot to get. Um, you can kind of see one of the males here. This is one of my OG male sons, and um, that is his female at the back there as well. And they have little wrigglers somewhere here on the log. Let's see if I can see them. Uh, there we are. You can see his little wrigglers. So I'm letting them keep those wrigglers and bond but you guys have probably seen these guys uh, with their spawn on my Facebook. And yeah, so um, I'm gonna let them bond over the spawn and then hopefully they have bigger spawns for me that I can hatch myself. So you can see the orange and the yellow has really become accentuated and emphasized in this male after the crossing with the OG male and female. And you can see his black markings are also completely on point uh, really, really nice markings, and uh, the the pectoral fins, the anal fins, they're all extremely dark coloured, vivid colouring, which is exactly what we want. I wish I could show you guys this uh, male in better lighting, but he's protecting his spawn at the moment, so I don't want to uh, interfere with his, uh, his paternal behaviours too much and make him too stressed out, so we're going to go have a look at another individual. So here, I'm actually gonna show you a female that I will not take the spawn from. Um, you can see that female in the middle. She is very, very, very gravid, full of eggs. Um, she has massive spawns, but the problem is she is grossly gravid, which means, you know, her, um, her very swollen belly actually perturbs her daily behaviors, such as fast uh, movements to getting to food, and, um, I actually personally, as a breeder, would not select this trait. Um, it's a trait that I would not uh, ever like to see in any of my offspring and any of my customers uh, fish. So for this reason, uh, this female would not be selected. As well as that, her colors, I don't believe are good enough for the breeding process. I will always let her breed with a male and that is fine, she can try breed, but I'll never keep those babies, and she can be happy as a, as a protective ram mom, but yeah, never ever select for this trait at all. So that's a good way to have a look at a female that, um, that isn't as good quality as you may think. So I'm using a torch to kind of show you guys the spangling on this female. Uh, this female has got everything I really need, especially because she's only about three months old. I wish I wish she would come out from behind this plant, but anyways, um, very good coloring, very good marks on her face and her uh, side of her body. Her dorsal fleck is perfect for a female, in my opinion, where the front is almost vertical uh, fleck, and, oh, and the other one is uh, also vertical. So that's that's important to me. Because if I find a, a male fish here somewhere, so see how the male, this is a young male and his dorsal fleck at the front is actually longer than the second one. Um, let's see with this one. So these males are actually eventually going to um, get a really curved dorsal fleck and that's typical of a dominant male. So um, I hope that's not too confusing. And if it is, please send a uh, send me a comment down in the comment section. I'd love to clarify any of those points. Um, and I'll move on to the next trait. Alrighty, so here are two males that I would also not select for. And you guys could probably um, see why automatically. But these males don't have very good coloring. Um, as you can see in the one that just kind of interrupted our interview. <laughs> but, um, he is very, very washed out, in my opinion. Let's see if I can get another male. Here we go. So there's another one where the black is very, very washed out. 
colors are also very washed out and um, these guys I I would um, like to keep as pets and probably sell them for not as much money because I don't personally believe they're as good quality um, still very good looking fish and if I shine the torch on him you can see his uh, very nice turquoise colors come out um, so still a very nice fish but not as nice as something like like this guy or this guy here so yeah that washed out color is a beautiful fish but I am not gonna breed that with a GBR female say because I don't want the the traits of this fish to be carried on okay so we're moving on to um, let's see if I can get this focus we're moving on to the blue blacks and these are personally one of my favorites because of how accentuated the orange coloring is in their finnage and um, this guy's only a young male but and you can see how aggressive he is um, he's not too aggressive I mean he's trying to just impress the females a little bit and he's very hard to uh, get footage of because he zoots everywhere let's see if I can get him to stay still but this guy is very good quality for obvious reasons his coloring is just really really textbook in my opinion um, there we go and you can see how definite his markings are that black speck um, is perfect his turquoise markings are really nice and just that orange again I'm just gonna mention that again because it's so stunning but let's move on to the black ram tank and we'll analyze those ones as well okay so here's the beast of all beasts he is the black celestial lion that I am working on um, he is the alpha male in this tank and you can see that big lump on his head um, I've actually nicknamed this guy Beluga because he has that big lump on his head and as I was saying in the beginning of the video I wish I could, yeah I wish he would come out but um, that lump on their head is actually a sign that this is a dominant male he's very very healthy and uh, yeah he's he's a very good looking male so that uh, bump on their heads if you ever see that in the pet shops you make sure you get that fish because that means that fish is extremely healthy and uh, you know would probably be a very good breeder now taking a look at the bottom of the pecking order here is one of my very very low down males uh, still very beautiful fish but and still very very healthy but this fish oh sorry this is another dominant dominant male but the one we're looking for is back there um, still a very very good looking fish very healthy um, and here's another one but these guys uh, obviously don't have that big lump on their head and that's for the sole reason that they are not dominant fish but you can already see that the dorsal fleck is amazing and the coloring on these fish is also very very nice uh, I don't think it does it justice on the footage but that orange in their bottom pectoral fins is very very accentuated the turquoise coloring is very very vivid and um, yeah that's that's a good quality subdominant male if you wish um, here is a slightly more dominant male and you can see the beginning of the lump on the head uh, if it focuses sorry guys these are very hard to um, very hard to get footage of um, that's another example of a really low down male um, and then here's that male again so he's got the beginning of a, a lump on his head and that means he is on his way to becoming extremely extremely impressive looking alrighty so welcome to the Amazon and now this is my mom's tank her discus fish tank and the discus are doing really well by the way um, I actually ended up putting uh, three pairs of rams in here for my mom just as a present for one of her Mother's Day gifts and um, these these particular rams I actually chose uh, for their traits that I've mentioned before and um, you can't really see it in this fish um, because of the fact that um, he's quite relaxed at the moment but his dorsal fleck is really really nice it's starting to curve already and he's only a young male too um, the orange and yellow coloring on this fish is really really deep as you can see and at the moment it kind of looks a bit white 
but his turquoise coloring marks are just really really nice and I keep on saying really really and it's because these fish are like the fish that I dream of and yeah they're just really cool I'll just get some footage of my mom's discus since quite a few of you have been wondering about them this is Clyde one of the males and he is a very dominant male um, and that's his his female that he's been courting uh, they haven't got all their colors yet but you can see his blue rim is starting to come through which is really exciting and yeah those two females keep on fighting over Clyde he's a bit of a bachelor in the tank but back to the rams um, I'm gonna go show you a really good looking female in this tank alrighty so here you can see a pair are actually getting ready to spawn in my mom's tank um, this is a really nice male with really really long dorsal flex and that is because he is the dominant male and you can see this female now this is probably one of the best females I've ever seen uh, for her age and she's got a really nice pink belly really nice markings and you'll see her black spot is like three different black spots combined with some really nice speckling and hopefully we can see that if she comes to the front uh, that would be very nice but yeah this male has a really nice red eye really good markings and this female is you can kind of see you can kind of see what I mean by that black mark but the spangling on this female is really really nice alrighty everyone so we've gone through quite a few different uh, facets to understanding whether a ram is good quality or not uh, there's different things to consider especially the age whether it's dominant or not the sex of the fish whether the female has sufficient spangling whether the male has a really nice dorsal fleck uh, we've gone through something that most people don't know about the the head lump on a dominant male ram usually you see the same thing or a very similar thing in angelfish so that was really cool to go through with you guys and to show you exactly what that looks like in that really beautiful black celestial male um, and so things to consider when you're buying a fish that I don't have here but you need to be aware of them is a sunken in belly now if you see a sunken in stomach of a ram do not buy that fish and unfortunately a lot of the rams out there are actually uh, hormone treated and they have the sunken in belly so many people every week as I said in previous videos come to me and they tell me there's only so much I can say and so much I, so much help I can give but before uh, they even do the treatments or do any of that the fish is already deteriorating lost its color uh, is sitting on the floor of the aquarium and yeah it's it's not good 99% of the time they die um, another huge proportion of uh, complaints I get is the fish looked okay it was a little bit skinny but then it started growing uh, these growths on the head like ma mainly on the head but also on the body particularly towards the caudal fin or the tail fin um, and these can be seen as like pink or white lumps that's a cancer and like all cancers it's unfortunately not a good thing and those fish usually die too so if you have any further questions please leave them in the comment section I will give you so much information I have so much that I can't actually cram into this video um, it's also a very uh, unique thing as well so when you're looking at a particular ram like a balloon ram there's very similar criteria but also very different criteria that you have to meet for a good quality ram there's a lot of uh, standards that you can make for yourself as well so if you do want advice just message me directly through instagram facebook or on youtube and i'll always answer you guys um, send me a picture of the fish that you're thinking of getting go take a picture of the ones at the pet shop send that to me and i can help you uh, kind of break down whether this fish is worth buying or not so Let's, uh, let's keep this going. Let's keep the, the RAM momentum going. I'm so glad to see how many of you guys are trying to get in the RAM hobby. It's a very hard thing to get into. It's similar to discus, but you guys, I believe in you and you can do this. Uh, once you got RAMs right, it's one of the most rewarding parts of the hobby. So keep going. You've got this uh, nine times out of 10. It's not you, it's the fish. Sounds really weird, but 
that's that's mostly the case so support local breeders that's another tip that i can give and um be kind to everyone thank you so much for watching this video please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already join the jfr fam uh, we're all very friendly here all really uh, encouraging and um yeah just just really good people so i'll see you in the next one and for now stay tuned